strongest man, but now cruising down the mighty Zambezi River in southern Africa, something we've never seen before. Mean, moody, magnificent. It's... Welcome to the Butlins Trophy from the Falls in Zambia. When David Livingstone got to the Victoria Falls in 1855, he was far more concerned about the abolition of slavery than female emancipation. But 150 years on, here we are with the inaugural contest to find the world's strongest woman. Now, it's quite possible one or two of you may be a bit skeptical about all this. All we'd say is reserve your judgment until you've seen the evidence. From South Africa to Scotland, Australia to America, eight women have come here to Southern Africa in search of this prestigious trophy. Let's now meet the eight who, in 40 degrees plus of heat, are most definitely going to perspirate. I love lifting heavy things, pulling trucks, moving things that girls aren't supposed to move. <laughs> Days, I believe like people love to see women doing sport that usually only men do. There's nothing wrong with being strong. You know, you can still be a fit feminine, you can still be, you know, as well as being strong. This is the apex of my lifting career, you know, so to speak, my, my life, I'd say. I'm excited to have a high, but mostly nervous. I don't mind saying that. <laughs> it's exhilarating being able to be strong and feel how healthy your body is. It's wonderful. Everybody likes to think that they're the best. So, yeah, I think I'm the best. how strong I am. So as you've seen, there are eight women taking part across seven disciplines, at the end of which one will be the world's strongest woman. So here we go with the first event at the car park. Well, some of you old-fashioned kind of guys might think women can't even change a tyre, never mind flip one, and if you think you're hard enough, you might debate that with the eight finalists. Anyway, here we go with the tyre, just a mere 210 kilograms, 500 pounds, to be lifted up and flipped down a 20-metre course as quickly as possible. As ever, commentary comes from Paul Dickens. 
Certainly a few nerves out there on the course. Our first four competitors, two heats of four in actual fact, in this tyre flip. And the very first one we're going to see, Sharon Waters of Australia, a personal trainer who adores this sort of competition. Next to her, Monica Porter, representing Great Britain, former sprinter, former athlete and a powerlifter. Jersey Monneau, representing Canada, Canadian champion at arm wrestling, powerlifting and Highland Games. And finally, Jill Mills of the United States of America. Well, she's just done everything in powerlifting, bodybuilding as well. An awesome competitor. Now, how are they going to cope with this sort of competition? A lot of questions being asked. Away we go. It's all about strength in the back. The grip is so important as well, and Jill Mills already off to a cracking start. If they don't manage to complete the course in the allocated time, well, the measurement will be taken, and that will be the competitor's score. But Jill Mills is really going, and Jesse Monneau of Canada just behind her. Monica Porter's not going too badly, but look at the gap between Jill Mills and the rest. Certainly big points here for the American, but remember, there's still four very good competitors to go. What a start for Jill Mills. Absolutely superb. Monica Porter just in the background struggling. Joycey Monneau, she's got a couple more flips to go to finish, but not going badly. Monica Porter, unfortunately, falling behind Sharon Waters of Australia, and Monica is having all sorts of trouble with that tyre. All the competitors have had a chance to test out the equipment beforehand. It's paid off for Josie Monno. She finishes second in this heat. Sharon Waters, well, a lot of work done in the gym for this sort of competition, but how on earth do you train to lift a tyre that weighs 210 kilos? Well, that's a great start for you though, isn't it? Well, that's what I was focusing on, just getting this Doing, doing well in this event, it kind of sets me up psychologically for the rest of the contest. Cracking time by Jill Mills as we see Charmaine Boss representing South Africa, arm wrestling champion, bodybuilding champion and a powerlifting champion too. And then Jackie Young from Scotland representing Great Britain, another champion this time in bodybuilding. And then at 1 meter 83 and 88 kilos body weight, Robin Regenberg Coleman from the USA, the biggest competitor here. And next to her, the smallest, Heini Koivunemi from Finland. Take your grip! On, Jackie! Douglas Edmonds, Ready. the referee, making sure everything is absolutely spot on and away we go. On, it's going to be very interesting to see how the competitor nearest the camera, Heini Koivunemi, gets on here. On, She's flying at the moment. She only weighs 67 kilos and very inexperienced in this type of competition. But she's going well. Robin Regenberg Coleman, a little bit behind her on the inside of her. This is good. Jackie Young from Scotland going well. Jackie, 35 years old, a nurse. She's trained very hard for this competition. And Charmaine Boss on the far side going well. But Haney Koivunemi just outside Jill Mills' time. But I think good enough for second place, and Jackie Young has scored well too. 39.86 for Jackie. She could well get third. Charmaine Boss has finished two, and Robin Regenberg Coleman disconsolate in fourth place in that heat. After three bleeps, uh, bleeps here, yeah, you are tired, and you just must, must concentrate and forget the pain, and you just go for it. Where is the pain? Everywhere. Last time I did it, I think I flipped it over about four times. I couldn't do it anymore. So when I seen we were doing this again, I thought, right, the first event, my worst event, at least it gets it over and by me. I can't believe I completed it. I'm really pleased myself. <laughs> So varying fortunes for the two British competitors, but Jackie Young doing well with six points there. Jill Mills, though, out on her own at the top. It just really feels good to win. <laughs> to, be, to be powerful, to get stronger, to set a goal. I wouldn't be happy just being average, built, you know. For me, this is, this is what makes me happy. Who's that lady? Where could you see this event going in 5, 10, 15 years' time? I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that we can all be good diplomats for our sport and really help it grow. It'll be slow, much slower than the men. But I'd like to think in 10 years that there are contests nationally, internationally, that we can all compete in. And will you, will you still be competing in 10 years' time? 
If my body's healthy still, yeah, I, I would love to. I'm, I feel so passionate about this sport. You know, I really, I really love this sport. Well, we had the tire, now we have the car. Well, most of you have done this in the gym, but not too many with a car on your back. But it's the second task that faces uh, strong women. Uh, but I gather, Robin, you've never actually done this in your life, have you? Can't say that I have. I've had to push a few, but never squat one. So what are the big challenges that are facing you here? Well, this is a test of strength and endurance. It's a real test of how much you can stick with something, how willing you are to really grunt it out and make it happen. Monica Porter comes into this squat lift, having only attained one point in the previous event, so really Monica, needs to compete well here. Lift! The effective weight on the shoulders, around about 135 squat. kilos, which is around about 300 pounds, and it gets heavier there because of the squat. angle they're lifting, but that's a good start by Monica. It's unbelievable to think that as a former sprinter, she then turned into a powerlifter and has come here in this very first World's Strongest Woman competition. She's got a couple. That'll be encouraging. Come on, Monica, squeeze it out again. Good effort, three lifts so far. One more would be very, very useful indeed. But she's used to this sort of training, but three repetitions for Monica. It's going to be interesting to see how that stands up as a top score. Whereabouts did it get you? At the bottom. Yeah. And what, what effect does that have on your body? What, 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 what's actually happening to your body when, that, when you get to the bottom and it's hurting? You just can't push against the weight. You just can't push, move the weight, basically. I mean, um, 130 I probably could, could rep, but that does not feel like 130. Charmaine Boss from South Africa. I think she might have a disadvantage in this event. She's one of the tallest competitors here. And believe me, it is a long way down. Anybody who has ever squatted a weight in a gym, these ladies are going rock bottom on the squat. Thighs almost well past parallel. Here we go. It's very deep. Oh, she can't shift it. And she's got more time. She can't walk away from the equipment. As soon as she lets go, that's it. I don't think she's going to do it. A zero score for the South African. So Monica Porter's score is good after all. Oh, jeez, man. I don't know what went wrong there. I mean, my best squat is 240 kilos. We're talking about 135. I don't know if it's the stand, the way I stood. I can't tell you. It's, it's crazy. But I'm so damn angry. I just wish I could bash somebody. You? <laughs> well, Charmaine's husband is around somewhere. I hope he doesn't Haney, uh, incur the wrath of Charmaine Boss. Meanwhile, Haney Kovyunyemi from Finland body. looking pensive. She's seen what happened to Charmaine. She needs what? four repetitions to go into the lead. Squat! Down slowly and deliberately, a little bounce at the bottom. Oh, she's in trouble as well. Now, this is a gritty competitor, but she shakes her head and walks away. Another zero score. And Monica must be enjoying this. Which is more than Sharon Waters was. She failed to lift the car as well. And the Canadian was in no better shape either. And Jackie Young couldn't manage to lift the vehicle either, so... What are they doing wrong? Mostly what they're doing is they're not spreading the weight around, the load around through their different muscle groups, being efficient in terms of lining up their body mechanically. So they're overloading their lower backs, they've got their feet too narrow or their feet placed in the wrong position, the bar in the wrong position on their back, they're doing a lot of mistakes. So just demonstrate if you like, what, what they're doing and what they ought to be doing. Well, one way to do it ideally to spread it around is to keep the weight on the, your heels and then keep your sternum up, and as you drop down, you hold a really tight position with your back, and when you hit that parallel position, then you lift your sternum and drive your hips forward, and it's spread between your legs and your back and the big muscles of your butt. It's really strong. And you're seeing a lot of people in there crunched up like this using just their back, and it's very inefficient. Well, certainly Robin regenberg Kelman has got a very good coach indeed. He used to compete what? in World's Strongest Man in the days of Jeff Cates. What? So Kelman. 
three repetitions to beat, and as the One tallest point. competitor here, may have a few problems, but actually looking pretty comfortable, and she's going to equal Monica's score now. Can she go four? Yes, she can. The American is in the lead. Well, this woman, she's been a bouncer. Can you believe that? A bodyguard. She's trained as a professional wrestler, and she actually puts a profession down now as an actress. There's no acting here. This is hurting. She said before the event, it was all about strength and endurance, and she's got that. She's got bundles of it. The crowd are loving this. A fantastic score, and only Jill Mills to go. She's absolutely destroyed Monica Porter's score, but still good points for the Briton. Fantastic stuff from Robin Reckenberg Coleman. She looks exhausted, but she's got a coach screaming at her. She's run out of time. 15 reps, absolutely exhausted. All the blood has drained away from her head. The muscles must be burning now. She's loved that. <laughs> Terrific stuff. What a big lead. You were having us on. You had done it before. <laughs> Only with a barbell. Did you think you might get that many? I was hoping to. I've had some really good performance in the gym, so I knew I had it in me. Is that one of the banker events for you, do you think? Definitely. I wonder what Jill Mills is going to do, because that score by Robin regenberg Coleman is absolutely outstanding. Does she go for 16? Or will she just be content to beat Monica Porter's score of three? Squat. The first repetition will tell a little bit of a story here. Is it easy? Well, that's not bad. So she's on her way. Are we going to see an American 1-2 in this event? She's equaled Monica. If she gets four, Monica Porter will finish in third place. Yes, she will. But good points for Monica Porter. Jill Mills heading towards that massive total of Regenberg Coleman. It is one and two for the United States of America. Breathing out on the way up as she squeezes that weight up. 135 kilos. Just short of 300 pounds. She can't do it. Regenberg Coleman wins it. Jill Mills finishes in second place and stays at the top of the leaderboard. And by quite some way, too, she's accumulated 15 points. That is a big lead over the rest. It looked like you were almost meditating halfway through that. <laughs> Takes a bit of concentration, yeah. Keep everything tight and get a breath full. Now you come second there. Yeah, I... How good my, a result is that for you? My goal is I want to beat Heine. She's going to be my toughest competition. It's all in who comes out on top at the end. So the key is to place in the top two all the way through. So Jill Mills, Miss Consistency, getting second place there behind Robin Coleman, but five people failing to lift the car at all. And so what that meant after two events was that Jill Mills had a three-point lead in this female muscle fest in the sun. Trained for many years, and this is the highlight, and this makes it all worthwhile. I've met so many beautiful people. The girls are fantastic. involved in this means finding boys that are bigger than me. Event three, down by the River Zambezi in the garden of the Royal Livingston Hotel. Well, we keep saying these events are not just about pure strength, and here's one to prove the point. The farmer's walk, lifting these two giant cylinders and running as fast as you can down a 50-metre course with them. Now, they each weigh 65 kilograms, so that's a combined weight of 130 kilograms, or getting on for 280 pounds. Let's see how I get on. And I'm not kidding you here. So 
as John recovers in the tent. The first athlete we're seeing out here is Sharon Waters from Australia. And Josie Monno in a head-to-head, -head, the fastest time, of course, wins. Well, these athletes don't actually weigh very much more than the cylinders themselves. So this is a massive weight. And it's wait, got to be carried wait. as quickly as possible. Jesse Monno, they're We're actually ready. getting off to a bit of a false start. The referee calls them back. Away we go. Both strong women need a very, very good score here. And the Canadian absolutely flying. Jesse Monno from Winnipeg works on a dairy farm. She likes this heavy carrying and heavy lifting. Oh, nearly went there, though. The turning round part is a problem as well. Seat. If she can just hang on, yes, she can. A good time, 27.38. Sharon Waters almost grinding to a halt here. Oh, she's put them down, but she can carry on. There is a time limit of 60 seconds. This is real agony. Those hands chalk to keep the palms dry. Come on. Oh, the Australian almost went over there. The officials cheering her on. The spectators cheering her on. Can she finish? Yes, she can. 57.31, but a tremendous performance by Josie Monno of Canada. Down the uh, second leg, were there moments when you thought, I might as well just give up on this? No, never. No, pick it up, keep going, you get that. <laughs> finish it, yeah, finish it. And how, how do you sort of assess the whole competition at the moment? Um, it's a tough competition. Um, the girls are amazing. So I sort of, I've got a gauge now of what I've got to get to for next year. The farmer's walk's easy for the gold farm girl, eh? <laughs> Probably because I'm lifting bells on the, all the time, so it helps. So. Yeah. Was that quite easy for you? Uh, I felt pretty comfortable with it, so it was not that easy, but it was okay. <laughs> Charmaine Boss completed the course in 46.14 seconds, but Monica Porter found the going very hard and couldn't reach the end, just 49.5 metres. Interesting that Jill Mills should pinpoint this competitor, Haini Koivuniemi from Finland, as possibly being the nearest rival for the title of World's Strongest Woman. That's a long way away yet. Jackie Young of Scotland. I think she's really enjoying herself in this competition so far, lying in fourth place overall after the first two events. Take your grip! The mighty Zambezi in the background. What a backdrop here at the falls. Ready! Away we go. A magnificent time of 27.38 to beat by Jesse Bourneau and Jackie Young. A problem right at the start. And Koivya Nemi is absolutely flying. Now, how quickly can she turn round? That's good. Now, come on, Jackie Young. You've got a bit of work to do. Koivya Nemi striding out. This is a real tough event, believe me. Those hands will be burning now, and she's finished. What a superb time, 25.23. Now all eyes on Jackie Young from Stevenson in Ayrshire. Not used to this type of event, but as you heard Sharon Waters say, experience will tell, so in the future, maybe a champion, but not at the moment. Jackie Young's time, 43.15, a little smile at the end. Those are difficult to carry. I was happy. I controlled them quite well. My grip felt like I had nothing, prob no, no problems in my grip. And uh, uh, well, of course, now I wish why I, I, I should have done it like two seconds faster, but I must be happy. I should think she must. That was an absolutely superb performance by the Finn. So she's in the lead at 25.23. Now the overall leader, Jill Mills. It's the United States head-to-head -head now on this platform. Robin Regenberg Coleman in second place overall, but three points behind Mills. Take your grip. If she can beat her compatriot Ready. here, it would be great news. There we go. Regenberg Coleman away a little faster than Jill Mills, but she's all over the place, and Mills has gone down. Well, that's lost her about three meters. The difference in stature between these two is phenomenal. Regenberg Coleman turns around. Mills about two metres back now. She's gained a little bit. The clock ticking away. 
The Finns time, Koivunemi 25.23, and Robin Regenberg Coleman is outside it, so is Jill Mills. Coleman's time 30.37, Mills 33.44. Good efforts from both. Well, Robin Regenberg Coleman, an actress, and she's on a stage at the moment. I really thrive on the crowd and getting cheered on. So, with all these great people out here, I was raring to go. W were you looking at Jill? Not at all. I had to focus all the way down. Focus the finish line on both sides because I'm competing against myself out here. Well, that event threw the whole thing wide open. Jill Mills only fourth, Haney winning her first event. And what it meant was after three events, there were just two points between the top three athletes. Robin and Haney equal in second place, but not equal in many other ways. As you know, these days, most of the world's top strong men are of a pretty uniform shape, size and build, but that's not the case with the women, as you can see. So, Robin, what do you think Haney's got that maybe you haven't got? Experience. Um, she's training in Finland with some of the top current world's strongest men. And Haney, for your part, what, what, what maybe has Robin got that you wish you had? At least she knows how to squat. <laughs> and why does she know how to do that and you don't? She has. <laughs> Uh, strength in legs and a strong bum. Have you got a strong bum, Robin? <laughs> I've been told that. <laughs> <laughs> but what about the height difference? We can see there, she's sort of seven, eight inches taller maybe than you. Does mm. that matter? No, it doesn't. And Robin, when you look at Haney and uh, how petite she is in comparison, if I can say that, does that give her big advantages in athletic events? Certain ones, yes. Certain ones, no. It's a toss. But you wouldn't swap? No. You're happy the way you are. I'm very happy the way I am. Now, how's that for a view? Up on the eastern cataract of the Victoria Falls, we reach the halfway stage with the log lift. 50 kilograms to be raised above the head as often as possible. This is a real test of leg and shoulder power. Young from Scotland representing Great Britain, enjoying the overall experience here. And Charmaine Boss from South Africa. And look at the backdrop, the most magnificent sight ever in any sporting He's competition I think I've ever Africa. seen. Charmaine Boss. Charmaine Boss, she's been here before, but only as a tourist, not as a competitor. And, and Scotland, this about as close Great as you can get to a weightlifting competition in World's Strongest Woman, as many times as possible. 50 kilograms, 110 pounds. Take your grip. So these ladies have got to be pretty useful. Lift. In the back, the legs, and then finally a big push, and the arms lock, must lock out. One each. Well, as Regenberg Coleman said in the last event, it's all about strength and endurance. And this, well, it's about the same, isn't it? And Jackie Young can add balance to the list of requirements here. It's three all. Four. Charmaine Boss just goes in the lead. Four. Now, Charmaine Boss at the moment, 11 Five. points in total from the Five. events. Jackie Young has got 13. So, doing pretty well. Six, six. Both women in their very first strong woman competitions. They've all done powerlifting, they've all done bodybuilding. Seven. And uh, in Charmaine Seven. Boss's case, she's also been the South African arm wrestling champion as well. And look at this, Jackie Young catching up. Can she make it eight? Charmaine Boss has gone eight, and that is a useful score. Now, come on, Jackie. Roll it up the chest. And she really is having a problem. Boss, though, if she can stay still, will get nine. Good effort from the South African. Jackie Young, I think that might be her final score. Boss desperate to get one more, but 75 seconds are up. They've both run out of time. Charmaine Boss on nine lifts. Jackie Young on seven. Nice. Look at that, Charmaine Boss. Nice. nice tidy lady. Wants it back in the place where it started. It was good. Up until now, that was the best. <laughs> the best in terms of the kick it gave you? Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. It was magic. It was really good. Uh, now I've got to hope that the other girls fail. Failure is a relative term, but Sharon Waters couldn't match her total. Just seven for the Australian. And Monica Porter managed just six repetitions. 
So the South African Charmaine boss still in the lead with nine repetitions. Canada, Josie Monneau nearest the camera. <laughs> Terrific competitor. She's done pretty well so far, as has Robin regenberg Coleman. Equal second place with Haney Koivunemi, a couple of points behind Jill Mills. So 50 kilograms above their heads. They must stand absolutely rock steady when they've got the weight up there for the score to be given. Away we go, looking comfortable. Oh, oh Coleman's got a problem on that first one. Morneau has been given her lift. One. That's better by the American. Morneau one. One. going well, and she's using that split Go. technique. It's like a clean and a jerk in weightlifting. That's very, very tidy technique. Two. Looks as though it's no effort at all. That's super. Two repetitions each now, although, in fact, Coleman's has moved up to three. Coleman has had one disallowed by the referee and another she had to put it up again arms not locked Josie Monneau going steadily perhaps not as fast as Regenberg Coleman but every one of those lifts is rock solid Coleman just in the lead still now above the head has to stay steady she's looking a bit distressed can anybody beat Charmaine Boss? More no, that is excellent. I keep emphasizing that, but that is excellent weightlifting technique by any stretch of the imagination, especially with something as awkward as this to lift up. She's got seven, the Canadian. Coleman has got eight. Oh, the time has run out. 75 seconds gone. Robin Regenberg Coleman does not look happy. She had two disqualified by the referee. That could have made a big, big difference. And both the American and her coach, Tom McGee, know that only too well. Why are you not happy? Because I felt like I did more reps that were good that I didn't get counted. What, what did you think you'd done that they didn't think you'd done? I just didn't pause long enough at the top for them to count. And when you're used to doing a high rep workout with that, it's really hard to slow down. And it, I know I locked my arms out, so it's kind of difficult. But your adrenaline's pumping up there, and there are rules. I just, it's a little easy to slip up. The last two competitors have got the distinct advantage here of knowing precisely what it is they have to beat. Jill Mills on the far side. Heni Koivunemi, one of the most popular sports women in Finland, can you believe? And Jill Mills going well in first place overall, two points ahead of Koivunemi and Robin regenberg Coleman. But Charmaine Boss, still the strong woman to beat on nine repetitions. <laughs> well, that first lift by Jill Mills absolutely flew up. She's just pressing it out. Koivunemi, a little bit behind, two each, three for Mills now. This is fantastic lifting. Incredible muscularity around the shoulders, Jill Mills. Now, this looks awesome. Koivunemi is going well, too. Very close rivals, developing into very close friends, too. When they're not competing, the atmosphere amongst all the strong women is absolutely fabulous. But this is very, very serious. Koivunemi gets seven. Mills now going for the lead on ten, and she's got it. Koivunemi going well, too. She's got eight. Needs one more, does the Finn, to equal Charmaine Boss. And meanwhile, Jill Mills is running away with this. Fantastic strength. Koivunemi, does she get ten? She does. She's done enough. She knows that. She's not going to beat Jill Mills. But there's a bit of confusion here. She's being screamed at by some of the men competitors who are watching this competition, saying, carry on, carry on. But she doesn't need to. She's safe in second place. The clock is still ticking away. Mills has won it. And Koivunemi, safe in second. Four events finished, three to go, and you are three points behind Jill. Yeah. Is that a happy situation for you? No, of course not. <laughs> what a question is that? Well, I didn't know what your targets were. You, maybe your next events are the good events for you. Oh, you? Uh, yeah. Well, she's, uh, she's not bad. <laughs> she's uh, good in all events. Going into that event, were you confident you'd win it? Yeah, I felt pretty good about this one. I knew, I knew she's really good at this. Um, but it's one of my best events. I felt, felt really confident. And you proved it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.
Jill Mills out on her own, four repetitions clear of the rest. But what it means is that she and Haney are now pulling clear of the rest of the field. Three points between them, Robin Coleman still snapping at their heels, but Sharon and Monica finding it hard to keep up with the pace. So, event five, back in the car park. And so we come to the vertical lift, a 140 kilogram weight, that's more than 300 pounds, to be pulled to the top of this tower. Now this is a real backbreaker, but more than anything else, it's a test of the girls' hand speed and strength, pulling this rope as quickly as possible. They're going to have to get a really good grip on this one. Well, this event only introduced into strong man competition in the last 12 months, so it is still brand new. The, all the apparatus designed by Jamie Reeves former Britain's and world's strongest man who's out here helping the competitors. So Josie Morneau. Josie, you ready? 140 kilos, as fast as possible. And this is flat out strength, endurance and power. You've got to use the legs. You must use the back and the final pull with the arms. Absolutely agonizing. The first two, you don't notice them. And then the lactic acid really does kick in. Yuko Ahola, twice world's strongest man, just feeding that rope through. Another couple of inches and she's got it. So a good effort there from the Canadian, 24.15 seconds. It was hard, but I um, have one arm who's bugging me really bad right now, so it doesn't help. <laughs> Well, but I'm happy with my times. And rightly so. Monica Porter again finding the going tough, 38.48 seconds. And Sharon Waters, 31.51 for the Australian. Charmaine Boss now, making sure everything is absolutely ready before ready. she goes. Yes, she says, away we go. A bit of magnesium chalk on either side of that mat. They're so important for the grip. Oh, she wants a bit more on as well. She's lost a grip already. That's lost valuable time. So Charmaine Boss from Pretoria. Actually, the competitor with the shortest possible journey out of any of them to get here to the fall. She needs more chalk. This is bad news for Charmaine Boss. Josie Morneau still safely in the lead. Now, can Charmaine Boss get it? Yes, she can. 30.25. Oh, absolute agony on the hands as well. Good effort, though. Still some good competitors to come, though. The legs has got a lot to do with it. If you can use your leg power to just get it back all the time and then recover again, you'll, you'll see um, Jill Mills. She's, she's mastered that. And... Uh, I guess I've got some work to do, eh? And so has Jackie Young, lying in equal fifth place at the moment with Jesse Morneau. And as Morneau is in the lead in this event, well, Jackie, if Jackie can beat the time of 24.15, it would be tremendous news. Away we go. She has got tremendously well-developed arms because of all her experience in bodybuilding. But this is about strength, grit and determination now. And she's stuck again. They should have put that chalk on the hands before the competition started. They did, some of it came off, but she didn't suffer in the end. That is a superb time, 20.33, despite that little pause in the middle. Well done. That's pretty tough in your hands. <laughs> yeah, it's a good time. You know, you're going to be in the top three there, don't you think? <laughs> I'd like to think so, but at the end of the day, it's slim. We'll see what happens. Um, it's been experience being here and what have you. Um, uh, just see what happens. <laughs> Robin regenberg Coleman already a big favourite with the crowd here. Take your position. She really is an athlete who thrives on confidence, and when her confidence is down, it does make her performance Robin. suffer a little. Ready? So I wonder how she's yes. going to get on here. She says she's ready. Away we go. And great news for Great Britain. Jackie Young is in the lead at 20.33. Oh, the American stuck a little bit. She really has come to a grinding halt. There she goes. That's better. The clock ticking away. 20 seconds is gone. Jackie Young still in the lead. Two more competitors to go after Robin Regenberg Coleman. And there is the time, 25.76. I think another occasion where Coleman will not be very happy. But I could feel my hands slipping. 
especially in the left, because you have to walk your hands up really fast. When the left one's slipping, it's almost like doing a one-arm rope pull, making it a lot more difficult. Now, given the fact that you were five points off the lead before that, how big a blow might that be to you? I'd prefer not to think about that right now. I bet she is thinking about it, though, as Haini Koivuniemi of Finland gets ready. There's the man behind her, Haini, Yuka Ahola, who got her started in strong woman competition just last year, and away she goes. Now, this young woman, a primary school teacher in her hometown in Finland. And then none of her pupils give her any nonsense at all. This is a tremendous performance. Wow, she caught everybody by surprise there. 13.39. That is unbelievable. Jill Mills to go, but can she beat it? Fantastic. Well done. Thank you. How easy was that? Well, I felt it was quite easy. I trusted my grip. And I did it right because I didn't put any magnesium, make, no added. I just, I need, I knew I, I could do that. Well, I'm not sure what all that was about, but uh, Koivu Nemi, I think, a little bit disturbed by the fact that magnesium chalk was coming off her hands. The heat of the competition, the heat of the moment. I bet she's composed now and watching the most awesome competitor who's the last to go here in this vertical lift. Are you ready? Jill Mills, the overall leader. Can she beat 13.39? That's two big pulls. The weight is on its way, 308 pounds, 140 kilos. Now watch the clock, 11, 12, 13, 14. Koivun Emmys won it. Jill Mills, though, 15.98. Oh, what a competitor. She's done it again, big points in second place. And her husband, Milo, right out on the course to greet his wife. He will be delighted, too. A good result for Jackie Young, but with Haney and Jill filling the top two berths in round five, it means that with just two events to go, they really are out on their own. It's a two-horse race for the title. Now, just down the road from the car park, you can walk on the wild side of Africa. Well, with the competition really hotting up now, we head down to the pool. And so we come to the boulder holder, 140 kilograms of rock to be picked up and carried around the circle as far as possible. Two events to go, two points in it, two women in it, and these are they. Now, this is the combined weight of the two of you. So, Jill, how, how do you view this event? Um, I hate this event, to be honest with you. <laughs> this is my enemy, but I am, I'm going to conquer it. And why do you hate it? Because it hurts. <laughs> so, Haney, is this easy for you? Yeah, this is my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Like Jill Mills, Jackie Young has actually said she enjoys this event, if that's possible. It's over 90 degrees, Whoa. well over 90 degrees, all the competitors in the shade. Jackie Young, the spotlight is on her, away we go as far as possible, as many times around the circle as you possibly can. Jackie Young, 22 points she's accumulated so far, in fourth place on her own. And I reckon by anybody's standards, that is good. Now, at this point, you've got to shut out the pain and just concentrate and concentrate. It's slipping just a little bit, but she's hanging on for grim death here. Now, come on, Jackie, a little bit more. She's already been around 27 metres, one circumnavigation of the circle. Can she make it two? It's getting lower and lower, and she's hanging on here. Oh, my goodness, the pain must be excruciating. It's come down in 52.1. Tremendous effort by Jackie Young. That really was a great effort, but I'm afraid her fellow Brit, Monica Porter, could only manage 21.8 metres. Sharon Waters, a bit better than that, 34.3 for the Australian. 
and Charmaine Boss really disappointed by just 30.6. Grim determination on the face of Robin Regenberg Coleman from Venice in California. I just wonder if she thinks a chance of lifting the title has gone. She's five points behind Henny Koivunemi and another two points Look. behind Jill Mills. This would have to be something outstanding to make it work with only one event to go to see who wins the title. So here we go. Regenberg Coleman. She says she's got a future in strong woman competition. She says she's got a future in acting as well. I don't know how she's going to combine the two careers. But all eyes on this very tall, very elegant American at the moment. Trying to get two full repetitions and go ahead of Jackie Young. The Scott is in the background watching very carefully. Regenberg Coleman struggling a bit and it's down. Jackie Young still in the lead. Coleman, 51.6 metres. <laughs> Jessie Monet of Canada. She's got a lot of strings to her bow. Powerlifting. A Highland Games champion, and that does include tossing Lift. the caber and throwing the hammer as well. And an arm wrestling champion too. She's very deceptive. She's not as muscular as Jill Mills, but she's massively strong in the legs and the shoulders. So, the lead at the moment still belongs to Scotland and Great Britain. 52.1 metres. Morneau, over 27 metres. I think if she's going to beat Jackie Young, she's got to be heading for at least two revolutions of that circle. And doesn't the water in the pool look inviting? All the pupils from the Queen Victoria School in Livingston cheering the Canadian on. And she's done it. She's gone twice round. She's in the lead and going on. Fantastic, absolutely super. Josie Morneau, 64.3 metres. Two competitors to go, and it's the big two, Koivunemi and Jill Mills. All the time spent on the farm and in the gym have really paid off for Josie. It's my second time I do it, so I knew how, a little bit more how to do it. So. Yeah. That was a fantastic distance. Thank you. No, nobody's going to get near that, are they? Oh yeah, yeah, you'll see Haney. <laughs> she can do very good, so we'll see. Well, very soon we're going to know who the very first world's strongest woman is going to be. And it looks as though it's a head-to-head -head contest between Koivunemi here and Jill Mills, who goes last. So Haney's got to put pressure on the American. Two points behind with only this event and the final event to go. Super suits, which gives a bit of extra support around the lower back and the legs as well, and looking comfortable. I don't think I've ever met a competitor in any sport with so much determination as this woman, Koivunemi, trying to beat first of all the target of 64.3 by Mono. She is slowing a little bit. It is getting low, but there's two hands grasped around the front, looking solid. She goes past Mono. She's in the lead, but how much more can she get? Oh, this is fantastic. Down it goes, 70.9. Down she goes. But will it be enough to beat this great American competitor, Jill Mills? Haney will just have to watch and wait. When I did the first round, it felt so heavy. And I thought I could never go two rounds. But then I was thinking, if I want to win, I must go, I must go. Oh, it felt terrible, and the pain is awful in my hands now. But you're happy? Yeah, must be happy. She'd be even happier if she won this penultimate event, but first of all, she's going to have to wait and watch as Jill Mills from San Antonio in Texas goes for Look. gold once again. Look at the muscularity in her forearms. Ready, go. Oh, she almost got off to a false start there, but away we go now. That is a massive walk with this huge weight by Haney Koivunemi, 70.9 metres. Go on, Jill, drive it. And this really, a game of cat and mouse. Jill Mills has seen everybody else go before her. She's been able to compose herself, and if she does win this event, the cushion will have extended even further with just the loading race to go. I just wonder if we might be looking at the world's strongest woman. Here we go, twice round. She's puffing and blowing 
just a little bit. This is a tremendous performance. She goes past Bono. The next target is the Finn, and she's going to do it. Oh, she's going to win another event. She knows she's done it. Jill Mills gets maximum points once again. She didn't actually need to go as far as that, but 78.9, that clinches it, and that gives her another eight points. Absolutely magnificent. Are you almost there now? Almost. One more event, and it's a good event for me, so I feel pretty good. Unless I make a mistake, God forbid. <laughs> You're there. You've, you've, got, you've got one hand on the trophy? Oh, I, I never count anything before it's over. <laughs> and I've learned that lesson. Three wins out of six for Jill Mills. She and Haney once again well clear of the field, and they really are setting the standards. The rest are going to have to follow in the future. There is still one event to go, though, and nothing is certain in any sport. Jill Mills could still lose this, you know. And so, down by the Zambezi, one final event, the Grand Climax. Now, please don't feel that in any way we're trying to oversell this programme, but believe me, history is about to be made. Bruce Wilhelm was the first official world's strongest man a quarter of a century ago, although, of course, Hercules and Samson might have beaten him to it by a few years. Whatever, Jill Mills does stand on the verge of being crowned the first ever world's strongest woman. All she has to do is finish in the first four in this final event, the loading race. The bag, the weight, the tyre and the barrel, each weigh 55 kilograms, and just like the Atlas stones, they have to be loaded as quickly as possible onto that wall behind me. And well, what a few days it's been for Jackie Jackie Young, Jackie Young from Ayrshire in Scotland. I think she'll be delighted when she looks back on her performances here, as will Charmaine Boss, South Africa's strongest woman. Jackie, at the moment, equal fourth on 27 points. That is very, very good indeed. So here we go. All these objects weighing in at eight stones, and this sack's got to go on the highest part of the wall. Charmaine's a shade taller than Jackie. Just looks back to make sure it's on, but Jackie Young's got problems. Now, come on, you've got to go faster. Charmaine Boss is five points overall behind Jackie. I'm not sure if the South African could actually catch her. So Jackie could be safe in fourth place, but still Josie Morneau to go. Then the tyre. This is awkward. Jackie is catching Charmaine. One object to go, the barrel. It's head-to-head. -head. Here we go, Charmaine Boss. Can she get it up? Come on, Jackie. Oh, she's done it. Tremendous stuff. What a finish for the Scot. And Charmaine Boss just behind. Well done, Jackie Young. And now all the effort's over and done with. What are your thoughts on the whole thing? It's been really great, enjoyable. I hope it takes off. I'd um, love to come back and do it again. Now I know, as I said before, my weak points, my strong points, what to train harder on. Robin regenberg Coleman, not to be world's strongest woman this year, I feel, but maybe in the future, Josie Monneau, equal on points with Jackie Young, and so she's got to beat 39.08 to beat the Scot. Coleman wants to get away to his sprint start here. She can't wait to get to that sack. Now, this should be easy for Robin. On the shoulders. She's taking her time, though. Should be easy, but it hasn't been. Josie Morneau struggling as well. Having said that, Jackie Young struggled at this stage in the competition as well. Then the bar. Eight stones, 110 pounds. Up it goes. Coleman is on her way. This is where Jackie Young started to catch up. Coleman almost lost it in the mighty Zambezi there. It was on its way. So just one object to go for the American. Josie Morneau goes for the barrel now. Robin Regenberg Coleman on her way, but can she beat the time of Jackie Young? No, she can't, and she's got problems there. Can you believe it? Josie Morneau came away with a sprint at the end. The Canadian beats the American, but it is Jackie Young who's still in the lead. Great stuff. Jill Mills on the right says, yes, I'm ready, to Haney Koivuniemi. Since about event four, it really has been a head-to-head -head between these two. The very first world's strongest woman to be crowned in what? States, about a minute's time. Jill Mills. Jill Mills. 
What a diplomat and what an advert I'm she's been for strong woman Haini competition Koivunemi. over the last few days and over these seven events, as has Haini Koivunemi and the rest of the competitors. Tell you what, they've really sold it to me. On the whistle! Jackie Young's time at 39.08 to beat. And you heard what John had to say as Koivunemi gets away. All Jill Mills has to do is finish in the top four and she will become world's strongest woman. Well, powerlifting has been part of women's competition for many years. Weightlifting is now in the Olympic Games. So this, another test of strength for women around the world. And Jill Mills is catching Koivunemi, although Koivunemi got the tire on first. What a climax, what a finish. Great times from both of them. Koivunemi had a problem there, but she's won this event. Jill Mills a shade behind the two fastest times. And Jill Mills knows she is the world's strongest woman. What a fantastic performance. Koivunemi, a great runner-up, but really there was only one champion in the end. I feel good, I feel good. Proud? Yes, I am. But hey, I got to give this woman all the credit in the world. I, I in my training, I saw her little butt running in front of me the whole time. Little. <laughs> and what does it mean to you? Uh, God, I'm right now. I'm a little overwhelmed. I'll tell you in a couple weeks. Uh, it's a very rewarding, very rewarding feeling. Yes, feels good. Going into that last event, did you still think you might win? Yeah, I told her that everything can happen, but uh, I knew she's she's good in loading, and uh, three three points I knew that was very hard. So, to be honest, I was uh, I thought that she wins some second. But it was a matter of pride for you, wasn't it? To, yeah. to, you've beaten her in the last one. Yeah, <laughs> I think she she let me win this. I think she did. I'll let you think that. <laughs> Consolation in the final event for Haney, Jill Mills in second place, but what that meant was that Jill Mills was the inaugural winner of the World's Strongest Woman competition. Well done to Jackie Young, finishing in fourth place, but really it was a great effort by all concerned. In third place from the USA, Robin Regenberg Coleman. The runner-up representing Finland, Haney Koivunemi. And the champion, the very first world's strongest woman from the USA, Jill Mills. And so the Bufflins trophy will be heading back to San Antonio, Texas to occupy pride of place on Jill Mills mantelpiece. A few years ago I got the idea in my head, well, I'd love for there to be a world's strongest woman, but it seems so unrealistic, so far away. I thought maybe my daughter could do that someday, you know. I couldn't believe that actually this year we were going to have this. It was a great, great surprise. I felt like I did everything in my power to win and let the chips fall where they may. And how proud will your daughter be of you <laughs> when mum is the world's strongest oh, woman? I know you made me cry. <laughs> I hope my daughter's proud. Yeah, I hope she's, um, I hope that she looks to me as a role model and really uh, wants to be whatever it is, just really feels like she can do whatever she wants to do. You don't have to worry about what other people say women have to do or, you know, your role is this or that. Just uh, whatever makes you happy in this life. As long as it doesn't hurt anybody else, go for it. I can rub and scrub till this old house is shining like a dime. Feed the baby, grease the car, and powder my face at the same time. Get all dressed up, go out and swing till 4 a.m. and then. I got a $20 gold piece, says there ain't nothing I can't do. I can make a dress out of a feed bag, and I can make a man out of you, cause I'm a Well, I've borrowed heavily from the formal conceits.